have KCCK's Dennis Green hanging out here today with trombonist James Miller, who is in for a concert this weekend with the Kirkwood Jazz Ensemble and the CR Jazz Big Band in Ballantyne Auditorium. First off, Jim, welcome back to Iowa. Welcome home. Thanks. Thanks. You're a Cedar Rapids native, now making a living playing and teaching in the Los Angeles area. So, uh, and you are, yeah, you bridge both you spend time in both the jazz and the classical genres because you play with the la philharmonic a lot i do that's my main job and then uh after hours um i tend to, to do a lot of variety uh, or on my off time so. well uh, looking over your website and your bio and stuff you do you do a lot of variety i mean everything from everything from rock to jazz to latin and pretty much everything in between you even had a stint in michael buble's band that's right you know and i have growing up in iowa to thank for that because the it the the variety is really cherished here i think and still to this day and and uh, the exposure i got from going to school at the university of northern iowa um and studying with the teachers there robert washett probably was a fantastic mentor uh for me um just to introducing new flavors of music and, and uh, um, when I was a freshman I, I befriended several graduate students and uh, they were all into the avant-garde and, and so I mean just my, my I was I was a big um, art ensemble a Chicago fan um, back in the day and, and it was really wonderful to have a kinship uh, with those that shared the same ideas well you make you make a good point there and it's something that I think that we get really used to and maybe even spoiled here uh, in our area. No musician who lives and teaches and works locally would say that it's an easy life, but you do you do a little bit of everything. You mm -hmm. teach a little, you play some jazz, maybe you play in a, ro in a rock or a funk band, uh, you, you know, hang out with other music aficionados and maybe do some avant-garde stuff. I think that by our very nature, all of our musicians locally get really well-versed in doing a lot of different things. And heading out to someplace like L.A. where people maybe specialize a little bit more, you might be a little unusual in that respect because you are comfortable in so many different genres. I would think so. And I try to keep, I mean, I sort of keep it a dark secret in the Latin world that I play orchestral music and and vice versa, but um, the word is starting to get out. <laughs> um, but it's nice because I just I don't want to be labeled as a classical musician trying to play jazz or a classical musician trying to play avant-garde music um, or anything else. So it's, so it's it's just good to to sort of keep it a, a little secret. I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I suppose, and again, in you know, in a, in a place like L.A., I suppose it is kind of easy to get pigeonholed. It is. It is. Uh, most if you're uh, um, a funk musician. You're probably never going to cross paths uh, with anybody in, in the in the uh, orchestra world. <laughs> well, we talked. Yeah, you the talked a little niches. bit about your experience at an undergrad at the University of Northern Iowa. So let's take it back even a little bit farther. You're a Cedar Rapids native. That's right. You graduated from Kennedy High School. I did. So talk to me about uh, about uh, being a young musician in high school and. Uh, seeing everything that uh, is out there to offer and uh, deciding that music was what you wanted to do when you were a young person? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I, I, growing up in Iowa in the, uh, being a child in the 70s and 80s was a really special time. Um, the, the influence of musicians uh, like Maynard Ferguson really laid a lot of strong uh, powers upon like high school trumpet players and, and big band in general. And so uh, the big well, band, it made it made big band hip. It made for band, our generation. That's, that's right. That's right for the long-haired kids, and uh, I mean, I just thought that the big band was, was just great at the Kennedy High School when I was going to junior high school. Um, and uh, uh, Kim Scharnberg is a local legend, and and he's he now writes for Broadway, et cetera, et cetera. He's a fantastic trombone player, and 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 uh, he was the guy that I mostly looked up to. So I think it's important to have um, you know senior members of your community that that. Are promoting, you know, themselves and, and helping others to to uh, follow suit. And um, so when I got to high school, was, um, you know, I was pretty much excited about it. However, I think the, the Maynard Ferguson era sort of waned. Um, and so, the, you know, the the, the nature of, of of hearing great brass playing in your ears um, sort of subsided a little bit. Yeah, the uh, the early '80s were not a not a big brass time. No, no, and, and it's it was unfortunate. Every kid. Uh, in high school, when I was every trumpet player in high school, when I was in junior high, they all had fantastic high ranges. <laughs> it didn't really turn out that well um, when I graduated from high school. However, um, the the public library, uh, the main branch public library in downtown Cedar Rapids, 
was my go-to. My mom and I would go there every Saturday, and I would read Downbeat magazine, and uh, I would I would check out albums. So I'd walk out with a stack of 50, 60 albums one time. Um, I ran to my band director, ironically. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> and got, he, said, he said, this is why I can't find anything here. Yeah. I mean, he, he says, oh, what are you doing? And I was being real sheep. He's like, oh, I'm just looking, you know, checking out some albums. But it was really great because, I mean, it just, there's, just the, the LP was, was a great medium. And, and uh, you know, I'd listen to a side and turn it over or not. Um, and I remember uh, I got to an album called Kind of Blue. And uh, I listened to it, and of course... And that was all over. Well, you know, as a youngster, and you think you're pretty good because you're an 8th grader, um, I was like, oh, I could do that. You know, because, you know, I want to hear fa- well, higher, yeah, faster, yeah, loud. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's not very fast. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't, you know, on first listen, it doesn't sound that hard. That's right. And several years later, I checked it out again. And then, <laughs> and then it happened, because that's, that's the first time that music actually spoke to me like a language. And uh, I, you know, there's no turning back at that point in time. Well, talking, yeah, we're talking about fine, kind of small group jazz here. Why don't we take a listen to something of yours in in the small group genre? This is sure. uh, from uh, now. What's the name of this group? Uh, it's just a, it was a uh, kind of a toss together group uh, when I was living in New York. Um, and uh, the first cut, I wrote some tunes. So the first cut's called Rodney. I think that's the one you're gonna play. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, it was. I mean, these guys were great players. New York is just rife with amazing musicians and amazing jazz players and, and those that are so interested in getting together and, and playing. Go through um, the Jim Miller story chronologically here. Undergrad at the University of Northern Iowa and then your grad work was at Juilliard. At Juilliard. Mm-hmm. And so that was when you were gigging in New York. Right. And uh, in the uh, men and women I've known who've gone through Juilliard, you know, you've when you think of that from the outside, you think, oh, you're, you know, you're in the classroom, you're, you know, you're studying, you're in the practice rooms, but, uh, but you're not, you're, you're getting out, uh, and playing out a lot. You try to, uh, there's, you know, there's a bit of a financial burden as a student. Um, my first year, I don't think I really left campus very much. Um, but I was all over the library there too, as well. And, and finally would get out into the city and, and there's a lot of free activity, uh, Free as far as not you know inexpensive in New York City and and um, I would do a lot of playing in Central Park uh, with a variety of groups and and uh, I mean the jazz is just the voice there and it still is for sure um, it was just a fantastic experience I can't I can't wax enough about uh, you know New York City and you of course then you you know now live in L A where as we said you're the uh, uh, the acting trombone principal for the L.A. Philharmonic, Mm -hmm. and uh, you also are on the teaching staff at UCLA, correct? That's correct, and uh, California Institute of the Arts. Uh, So that's, uh, that's... That'll keep you busy, and you still, and then, but you still play in your own groups in uh, jazz and other uh, formats too. That's right. I do a lot of home recording too. So, um, you know, anything that's that I work out songs at home, and um, I'm on the computer and um, playing into it, multi-tracking, et cetera, et cetera, and then once I feel like I have a good product, I'll I'll enlist friends of mine to play, and and uh, we'll try to find a venue and. You know, get it heard. What's the biggest challenge in working with students and teaching uh, trombone? You know, whether it's classical or jazz or you know, or any instrument right now. Uh, how has it changed since you first started taking on students? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, well, as a as a beginning teacher, I was still green and and learning things uh, entirely by rote. <laughs> I would say, um, and uh, I think the the biggest challenge for me was learning to accept. Uh, people as individuals and not trying to make them uh, into something that they may not be. Um, and uh, um, with that, trying to, to build upon their potential. And I think my, my teacher at Juilliard, his name is Per Brevig, um, he really wanted to make sure that, that I was an individual and that I had my own voice and I wasn't copying someone else. He said, you shouldn't be number two. <laughs> you should always be number one um, and define your own voice. And so I think with my students, it's, that's the biggest challenge is, is trying to draw out their individual voice uh, so they can have their own contribution to it. I mean, um, I'm not really going to make anybody uh, a viable part of the workforce, per se. That's up to them. But I just want them to, to discover who they are and, and find their own voice so they get the most enjoyment out of 
music, which is not really a product, it's just, it's, it just is. Talking with Jim Miller, trombonist who is uh, doing some clinicking and playing this weekend in the Cedar Rapids area and in concert on Saturday night with the Kirkwood Jazz Ensemble and the uh, CR Jazz Big Band. Uh, when, you f when you do one of these drop-in gigs like this where you're, you know, just coming in, you know, doing, you know, just a little bit of clinicking and a master class uh, working with a student band and also an adult band, as you'll be doing with CR Jazz, what are the, you know, again, what are, you know, what are the things that you're trying to get across, the major, uh, major things you're trying to accomplish? Well, for me, it would be consistency. Um, consistency with, with uh, uh, my philosophies when I teach and consistencies with, with communicating with a student if I was working with such in a clinic um, and imparting what I think is, is cogent information and, and uh, not stammering enough. <laughs> um, and then as far as playing goes, you know, we, a, a new group, uh, nothing is ever the same. You know, even one performance to another with the same group, it's always going to be a little bit different. And so, you know, uh, learning how people kind of play and then adapting to that and hopefully, you know, progressing that product to where uh, when it's concert time, it's, it's ready to go and, and uh, we've kind of blended all these elements together. What, uh, what are going to be the highlights, you think? What charts did you uh, want to feature this weekend? Well, um, there's a, uh, a, uh, a couple of things. There's a, JJ, a couple of J.J. Johnson compositions nice. um, that I like from, uh, from the old years. And uh, I have a tune of mine that I wrote about 20 years ago uh, that Al Naylor insists we do. Um, it's kind of it's a Latin tune, basically, um, and uh, a couple of nice ballads. There's a lot of fast tunes, and uh, he also asked me to uh, to uh, have come up with a, a ballad to do as a combo thing. So, um, secret sauce. I'm going to go and write something tonight. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to keep it local. <laughs> okay. Well, there there you go. So yep. uh, so something will even be a brand new, fresh debut. That's correct. Uh, or that instrumentation on on, on a, the program. It's a, it's a drummerless group. Um, so it'd be piano, guitar, and bass. Oh okay. And actually, that yeah, kind of frees things up a great deal. So um, I'm imagining you know several lines going at once and. Yeah, it's going to be really nice. I'm nice. Sounds like fun. Well, the concert is this Saturday night in Ballantyne Auditorium. 7.30 will be uh, downbeat, and t tickets will be available at the door. But there is also a master class uh, that afternoon in the band room uh, at Kirkwood. And uh, whenever I talk about this, I always want to de you know, kind of demystify it because you think master class. Well, you know, <laughs> I obviously must be a master in order to attend the master class. But it's, uh, it's really just an opportunity for people to get to know you a little bit, you know, hear a few stories from your life. And, yeah, there'll be some playing, and people are welcome to, you know, bring their instrument and play or just listen, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, I guess when one travels into a, a, a different city and you don't live there, you're automatically an expert. <laughs> right. Um, but this is my hometown, so uh, it's it, that is all aside. I'm just, this, this is... Kind of for me, it's a nice homecoming, and and uh, to take what I've learned in my travels, and and you know, hopefully, be a good steward of that, as were my mentors when I was growing up here. Well, welcome home. It's great to have you back. It's been great having this conversation with you, and I'm really looking forward to the concert on Saturday night. Jim Miller will be the guest. Artist with the Kirkwood Jazz Ensemble and CR Jazz Big Band, Saturday night, Ballantine Auditorium. As I said, tickets will be available at the door. Now, to take us out, we did talk just a little bit about Latin. You're going to play a little Latin, mm -hmm. uh, but you're a part of a Latin band uh, that uh, uh, you play with out on the coast, Rumba, Rumba Kete? Yep, Rumba Kete. And uh, we're going to listen to a song from that to uh, take us out. This is uh, what the one you picked out was Kira in Mahana, right? That's right. Uh, I want to imagine. Uh, Jim Miller on trombone and rumba uh, as we uh, head out here. And again, thanks for having this conversation with me today, Jim, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday. Great. Thanks for having me.